Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a North West based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy and bulky items, collections and drop-offs. Fast, safe and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody, <laughs> welcome welcome to the All or Not On podcast with Billy Moore and my special guest again, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you on, John it is mate, thanks for coming, John May, right, so how's it been John? How have I been? How have you been, come on, how are you? How, how are you? Are you? Um, I'm alright, yeah, all is good, and well, yeah, uh, yeah, 2022 has been a bit of a mad year for me, Um. Yeah, a lot of lot of lot of lessons learned and a lot of changes made. So twenty twenty three is gonna be an interesting one. Well, yeah, let's think about it from last year's point of view. When uh, we last sat down and we spoke, there was a few of us back then. We'd done a little Christmas special, do you remember? We December. Did. So this time, say last year, that give was a take. year ago now. Yeah, so yeah. Literally to the day near enough. Yeah. And you were in a little bit of a bad place. Yeah. Remember you spoke about it on um on the pod. Yeah. So in them, in them 12 months, how's your life changed for the better or the worse? Um, so a year, give us a year of your life. For the better, well, for the better or the worse. I've had a few things happen this year, which, I, which, unfortunately. But um, but you've got to be grateful for them, no, Bill, haven't you? Because yeah. they make you the better you. So for the better or the worse, uh, I'm sure in time, in hindsight, I'll look back and go, I, I, I am grateful for these little things. Yeah, just, yeah, I've had to, you know, sometimes to learn a lesson, you've got to go through it, haven't you, so, yeah. Do you know when, um, see, like, when we talk about, like, changes and, you know, healthy lifestyles, a few years ago, you, you were on stage, you, you know, you're competing in, in, like, bodybuilding. Men's physique. Men's physique. What did you come third on that one? What? What did you come, what was you? No, I come, like, I don't know, there was about eight in there or something, yeah. I come about fourth or fifth, but... It, Even so, it's a brilliant It was about getting up there. Yeah. And you have you always tried to get back to that place of like physical fitness? Well, I've done t- 2018. I've done that. Yeah. And like, um, I loved it. I loved the process. I loved the, the, the like, the, the being strict and the, the, you know being regiment. I loved it. And um, I had a bit of a poo time after that. And then I done it again early 2020. I, I started in January and I done a prep for three months. Mm. So I was doing a show in May. In uh, the northwest, the UK BFF, it was a northwest um, regional thing, and uh, I was looking great. I was doing well, and then lockdown come. Yeah, I remember. I so, remember you were vlogging it. Yeah, I was vlogging it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you couldn't get away with it then, could you? I you was back, you, yeah. I was backing myself into a corner. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you were like, you know, you put yourself in on a platform, yeah. and you were saying, "Look, this is it, right, John?" But we know all about, right? Let me state, we know all about you yeah. and what you've done. You know, you you, you take your teeth type of shows you. Your corona moments it's been brilliant. You had people in, you know, in in uproar over it. it was brilliant, right? I want to know about John May, right? I want to know right about John May growing up. We've never, yeah, because we've never spoke about it. Let's go. We've had a we had a podcast a few years ago. Me and John, he was one of my first guests, and it was I think it was just one camera at the time. I can't yeah. even remember. I think it was your second guest after your Joe. I think yeah, second oh, guest. No. Yeah, after James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was right, third so guest. you you're the second guest, and the audio was a bit shit and everything. Yeah, so it wasn't the best. However, he's we got never lights and everything yeah, though. Lights and everything. Multi cameras. <laughs> he's testing the sound. <laughs> Flying. So, what was your life for you growing up, John? Tell us a little bit. You're one of a twin, aren't you? No one knows. Not many people know that, do they? You're yeah, a twin. I'm a twin. What was it like for me growing up? Okay. Um, I'm one of five. Um, my mum had three boys. Found out she was having twins the week before she was having us, and then a little girl come out, and then me. So yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I've sort of always like, I think that's why I always try to learn to be funny and use comedy. That was my way of going. Yeah. Do you know, yeah, and that yeah, was my yeah. way of getting heard type of thing. And that's what I used as a survival skill and a coping method, I think. So yeah. Um, 
Oh, is this the, is this the direction we're going? Yeah, yeah it's the okay. direction we're going, John. All right, so I said, what are we going to talk about, Billy? We won't talk about it all long. We just keep it light. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, we're growing up, aren't we? Um, okay, well, this is the big lesson I've learned this yeah. year. Um, yeah, so it's like, I don't know where to start. Yeah, it, I, I, it's, been, it's been a life of struggles, Bill. Yeah, it has, yeah. It's just, um, but I, didn't, I just, but I'm not going to sit. I, I'm not going to sit in ignorance. I, I love, I, I want to understand who I am. I just don't want to, like, I've had it in my life, Bill, where I've had the nice house and the nice car and the Fitbit. I've had all that and it just doesn't make me happy. So what makes me happy? So there's something in there that I'm trying to figure out and I think I'm very close to it. And this is why I want to go on this walk, ultimately. Yeah. Obviously, I'm raising money for charity as well, but first and foremost, I am doing it for me. And it's a, it's a reset because I've just got rid of my business. I've just, I've got rid of everything. I literally want to start again. Yeah. With all the information I've learned, I just want to start again. I'm 40 now, 41. If I live till 80, I'll be happy. So I've lived the first half of my life trying to figure my shit out. And you know the score, Bill. And I want to live the other half enjoying it being true to who I am and understanding who I am. Or I could go and buy nice clothes, or I could go and buy a nice car, and I could go and do this, and I, I, I can just pretend, and I'm not willing to do that. I've seen something yesterday which really hit home, and it said, uh, you know, don't buy nice things, buy experiences. Yeah. Right, and I thought, wow, you know, that's all we ever we ever do, is like buy all that shiny stuff on the outside to make us feel good. Like, you just... Fucking a denial on the edge. There's, there's a vacuum. There's something missing, John. Right? There's always been something missing, mm. and and I get it because there's always been something missing within me, and I try to fill it with all kinds. But I've seen one of your Facebook statuses where you've listed literally all the achievements you've done: marathons in the US. You know, you've done, you've opened, you know, dog parlors, hairdressers. Go through that, John. You've you've done a lot, really, haven't you? I have done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's never you, it's never really made you happy, has it? Do you believe it's 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 trying to I find think you, something? Mm, okay, Bill. So I think you've got to do it. Yeah. All to think, hang about that doesn't make me happy. Yeah. But you're gonna chase what you think makes you happy, and it's not till you have the things you think you wanted, or and you go, it's got to make any difference this. <laughs> so then you've got to go deeper inside, and I'll get onto that, yeah. and I'll tell you this. This is why this year has been so important. Yeah. I'll tell you my. Do you want to know my my story then? Okay. So I'm one of five kids. Uh, my mum, Pat and Bernie, my dad. I've got my elder brother, Terry, Alan, Jamie, and my twin sister, Emma. And um, I was always just a little jokey one. Grew up in a pub. Da, 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 da. But unfortunately, and my siblings might disagree, because even my twin sister says, you were brought up in a different house from me. My mum had had five kids. I was the last one. And I think I was just like, I was just wanted to, I weren't getting it. And it's not till I was an adult to realise, you know what I mean? I weren't getting that validation. I weren't, um, they were too busy. They were just, do you know what I mean? I was just another kid. I, um, I never felt important. What was important to me was not important to anyone else. So I grew up as a child. I grew up to being an adult, thinking what's important to me isn't important to everyone else. So that always put me on the back foot. So that created low self-esteem. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So that's something I've worked on. So when I left school, um, I was the only one out of our family to actually finish school. Um, we were in a poor background or something like, or anything like that, but it's like I was the only one who actually left with uh, qualifications. Don't get me wrong, all my family, you know, we've all went off to do all right, you know what I mean. And uh, so I was the only one there. And then when I left school, all my family were builders, and um, so my brother was a, a quantity surveyor, my other brother's a top joiner, my other brother, he was a trainee civil engineer. Da, 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 da. So I was taught, and my dad was a bricklayer, or my uncle, everyone grew up in a pub. All builders, right? So what am I meant to do? Be a builder. <laughs> so I got all boss opportunities, trainee plumber, trainee uh, QS, trainee civil engineer, and I failed at them all. I don't know why I failed, because I was fucking wasn't interested whatsoever. So I come to a point where I was a bit of a loser. It was like, I was a bit of a joke in the pub. Oh God, well, what job are you doing this? And I was, la I was laughable, but I was only 16. I was mm. only 16, 17, 18. So I thought, what do I want to do? I was with this girl at the time, Carly, and I said, uh, do you know what I want to do? I want to be a barber. And she laughed at me. Barber. <laughs> and I wouldn't do it while I was with her when I split up, but I thought, no, fuck it. I can't swear, can I? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> so I went off to be a barber, and I went to work on a barber's. No, I, here's what I'd done. I went to work on a barber's. It called Joe Cummings in, in Garston as a trainee. I was getting like 30 quid a week or something. It was like 20. I went for two days. Didn't like it. Sorry. 
but I wasn't made to feel welcome. Didn't like it. Not against the barbers. Thing was the people there at the time. So I thought, fuck that. I'm not working there. And I went home to my mum and dad. I went, I've left that job. And they were like, fucking hell, here we go again. So what? we lived on Breck Road at the time. And I thought, I'm going to walk from Breck Road to County Road. And I'm going to walk in every single barber's on the way. And I'm going to ask them for an apprenticeship. First barber's I walked into was Jack's on Breck Road. It's happening, Ralph. And uh, I walked in and went, all right, mate. Um, no one was doing barbering at this time, Bill. It was like, people were like, barber? The associated, they just presumed I was gay. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, because no isn't one... that just what the... Because there was barbers around when I was a kid. They, they died out, Bill. Or was it just air dressers? I don't... No, the barbers, barbers completely died out. You just got little sweaty barber shops in the... You know, the... We had one on speak. I can't even remember the, the, the kid's name. But it, uh... it died out, Bill. It completely... So when I started it, I... I was just on the cusp of it coming back, yeah. um, and I walked in. I went, "I like Macy." Said, um, "What it is? Yeah, I'm I'm in college, and I, I want to be at, um, I, I want to learn to be a barber." And he went, "Sounds yeah, go ahead, start tomorrow." And I went, "What are you messing?" <laughs> and uh, look, I, I loved working in Jacks. I got on with Ralph, but I was on. I I, I didn't earn any money. Do you know what I mean? It just literally paid for me dinner. Like, so I thought, okay, so here's what I'll do. I'll stay there for a year. I stayed there for a year. And uh, I thought, I'll move on. So a year come and I went, Ralph, I'm moving on. He didn't want me to go because I'd become quite nifty and I had took the, the load off him, but I need to do it for me. And I went to work in one in town called Ben Eyre. Ben yeah. Eyre. Ben Eyre <laughs> on London Road. Didn't like me, Ben. He didn't like me. I don't think he liked me. Yeah, he didn't like me because I was, I was popular, I think. He, I took the shine away from him. Be honest, Ben. I, I'm being honest, you didn't like me, so... You know, where I am, 20 <laughs> years later. Um, yeah, so I, went, I worked in Ben Air. Um, yeah, and I left there and I went to work for Phil on um, Stuart Road in Walton. And an opportunity to come up with my brother owns a shop. I had a plan, I had a five-year plan, but I'd done it in three years. I thought I want to open a shop. I had the name, Sweeps, I had it, I had it all, Bill. I had it all drew out exactly how I wanted it. And I executed it perfectly and I opened my shop. And I've never worked so hard in all my life. I was so, so passionate. But before that, I was a marathon runner. Mm. And I ran my last, well, it wasn't my last marathon, but I ran the Blackpool Marathon literally the day before I opened my shop. So I thought I'll put, I'll put that to bed now. I just got through over three and a half hours in that as well. So I'd knocked two hours off. So I'm quite proud of that. Um, so I opened it and I, I just worked so hard. Like I just loved it and loved it. And, you know, I went from earning 200 pounds a week as a barber to... Having all this money under me, DVD player, thinking, what the fuck am I meant to do with this? I was just earning loads of money and I went used to doing it. And then six months into opening sweeps, my ma died, like pretty sudden. Um, and so I was like, okay. So she died on like the Tuesday. And like... How old was you at this, this I was time? 25. Still a young man. Yeah, 25. And... Um, after that, I like, I had like our family's motto, which is fucking stupid. Sorry, but it is. And ignore this if anyone in your family does it when someone dies. The, it was, the attitude was chin up, you know, stiff upper lip, crack on. You don't crack on. You don't fucking crack on. You grieve and you feel the pain. Because that took me 14 years to grieve for my mother. And that 14 years fucked my life up 25 i had my own house um i was with the baby's mom we were pretty happy um we were trying for a baby I had my own business I had a nice car boom 25 other people were still scratching the fucking bed didn't get out of, didn't get I out was of scratching the last do you know what i mean yeah well i was but when my mum died so my mum died i did not want to accept it i remember once i went into her house just after she died like days after and i was looking for items in my clothing and i went upstairs and uh I love this. You know, yeah. no. um, I remember um, feeling it, John. You got it, mate. I remember shouting it. I remember shouting it. I was shouting, Mom! I knew she was dead, but I just wanted to feel like she was there. Um, fucking hell, Billy. So, yeah, so I, I pretended she weren't dead in my head. I didn't realise, because I knew she was dead. 
but I didn't grieve. So I started going out all the time. Started speaking to girls behind the baby's mum's back, neglecting the shop. I distracted myself from the money under the, under the thing that was there to be spent now. And I pretty much stayed like that for quite a while. And then I set myself new challenges. So I opened the dog groomers. Then I started. But before you went to open the dog groomers, you just went on self destruct. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Sabotage. I went, look, I went full on self destruct. I wasn't that. I was a marathon runner beforehand. But you're, was, you're aware of how you feel, John, haven't you? You just felt them feelings there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so for you to avoid all that, which I do, is just like pick up something else that'll change the way I feel at that minute. Whether it's a woman, whether it's uh, spending money on drink, drugs or whatever, it's just avoidance. But how long did that go on for, the feelings of... I know you said 14 years. But was you in and out of it, the grieving process? I, I was ignorant to it. So you just I avoided, didn't grieve. Yeah. I, avoided, I avoided it by going out. Women, validation, duh, 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 food, That's duh. a mad one, I, isn't it? Validation, well, wants to feel well, wanted it, I'll, and needed. I'll go back to this later yeah. on, the validation, and this is why my relationships don't work. Well, it, it didn't work. Um, so, yeah, I was... And the baby's mum, it just... The, that just fucked up as well. Everything fucked up. If my mum wouldn't have died, I'd... I would, I'd probably be a millionaire now. If that multi-millionaire, because I'm clever enough, that John, who was focused, if he'd have stayed on that fucking path, yeah. he'd, he'd be very successful. And I'd have met the right people around me on the way to support me, and, and I'd, have, I'd have gone up, and I'd have met the right people, and, and that's what would have happened. But it never, but it's fine, it's not too late. Um. So yeah, and then, I didn't completely go off the rails, it's just I weren't that focused John anymore. So I opened sweeps and I did, ballooned up, went fat as fuck because, you know, and I was going out, you know, and yeah, I become quite unhealthy, really fat, but I was still dedicated to work, so I was still there, boom, mm. boom, 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 boom. Um, and then I opened the dog groomers and thought that was a good idea. And it was, it was successful, um, but we, I sold it because it was just, oh, it was hard work, dog groomers, like. Just, was it? Was it just as bad that, like... I thought it was a barbershop for dogs, no? <laughs> no look, Bill, we were the, probably the busiest in the city. We were getting like 30 dogs in a day. That, that's fucking good, like. Yeah, so what What? what stops you from con continuing to, it was just, to be successful in that? I was successful in that. Enterprise as well, I know. But what stops you from being... It was just a headache. Success? It was just the dynamic in the, in the shop. Couldn't Pe you, like, hire yeah, if I, if I, if I'm... Yeah, I did, yeah. If I cut someone's kid in the barbers, yeah. they go... Yeah. If I cut someone's dog, you're going to court. End of. That it it just it was so different. And did that happen? Oh yeah, well, it's gonna happen in every dog groomers. Yeah, yeah, we we cut I had a girl on a on an interview and she cut it. She was we said we, we cut this dog, this regular dog, like and the, the owner was okay with all that. She yeah. wouldn't cut the dog. Like the anxiety was like, fuck's sake. And it was just so temperamental. I was like, oh no, fuck that. Don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah. So I sold it to the woman who who worked there. No, it wasn't actually. It was Alan from work. It was uh, it was his wife of one, uh, and she sold it recently. It's still going. It's, it's still flying. Um, so after that, and then I started acting. Um, but everyone knows about the acting bit. So what happened then? The shop was only small, but it became that successful. It becomes stagnant. So it had nowhere to grow. It, it, it grew as far as it could. So I had all these potential customers, but there was nowhere for them to go. So I sold the dog groomers and I thought, right, I'm going to open the ultimate sweeps. I'd moved the goalposts. Mm. I'd set myself a new challenge. I had passion again. Um, so we opened sweeps on County Road, sweeps barbershop and coffee shop, and we trebled our customer overnight. Like, we, I absolutely smashed it. Um, and I got it to where I wanted it to go. I was so passionate. But here's what happened. I'm very visual, Bill. Yeah. So even when I've done the men's physique competition, every meal, every walk, every drop of water, everything I've done led to that image of me on stage doing that. I've got the picture where someone took, where I'm, where the image I had, which didn't exist yet, I've got that image. I've got it on a photo because that's the image I had and I got it. So it's the same with the, with the barbershop. It was 2018. It was 2018, it was Christmas, and the coffee shop is rammed. The barber shop is rammed. And I just start with my little suit on, I'm standing back. There's a little boy with his family, and he's eating a nice cream. 
and uh, with his family. See, I'm getting emotional about this. And I just looked around and went, I've done this. I'd created a hub in the community and I burst out crying. I burst out crying because I was so overwhelmed because I'd done it. I'd done that little, I'd completed that goal that that 20-year-old John wanted. The girl who tried to buzz off me, who probably turned around and went, yeah, that's my ex-fellow who owns that. Do you know what I mean? I mean she may or may not do, but I'd, I'd, I'd smashed it. And after that, <sighs> what do we do now? Do you know what I mean? So that's I when I met you. Around that time. 2018. Yeah. I'll tell you when it was. It was January. Just Christmas. Christmas I remember time. you come in. Yeah, it was, a, yeah. it was just before Christmas. 2017, 2018. How I first heard about you, I know this fella, yeah. He was in jail and that. And like he walked into this production company and like this script and went, yeah, I'll make that. I thought, <laughs> who the fuck's he? He's fucking mad. Yeah, but he made it. Like that, I went, fuck, and it was you. <laughs> it was you, so I'd heard about you. Um, what happened then? So I thought, right, okay. And this is when I'd done the men's physique competition. I moved to Frodgham. And you think to yourself, why did I move to Frodgham? Was I running away? Was I running away? Because I asked myself the question for a year. Why have I moved here? Why? And the re- it took me a year to realise why I did. I wasn't running away. Yeah. I wasn't running away. I'd spent years and years and years being that man with the suit on, listening to bullshit all day, every day, playing a part of John the Barber. You walk the shop over the road. Hi, John, you're all right. Oh, hello, mate, you're all right. Uh, how's the acting not working? No. Everyone always presumes you're not working as an actor. Well, yeah, I am actually. And um, so it was just that act. I needed to fucking break from it. I was done. I didn't want to put up this this fucking happy customer service man anymore. I'd had a break. So that's when I moved to Frodgham and I left it to the staff. I just said, I'm leaving. And that was hard. Because in your heads, in their heads, you're, you fucked off and we're making you money. Yeah. Like, And I know there was a bit of that. Whatever. But I was the one who worked hard, not them. Um, anyway, so that's when I'd done the men's physique competition. So I'd done eight months of work, trains with Carl Tierney from Tier Pro. And um, I lost like five and a half stone. And, uh, it's a lot that is, you know, I completely, it's funny, you know, Bill, because it's like people are coming to the shop and you're like, you go, you're all right. See much of your John? It's like, I am John. <laughs> like, and sometimes you just me advantage, you know, like, I don't know, you get people in selling stuff and that, and like, you again, you have to entertain them. But I, I like, they, they didn't know it was me, which was quite funny, like. So I got looked completely different, like. Uh, I was, yeah, I was a buzz. And when I, I done, I done it, I worked so hard. Well, I feel like a fraud, actually, because people used to go, that was hard work, that. And at the time, I thought, well, it's not. It, it's actually not, like, I'm enjoying it, and it's not that hard, so I felt like a bit of a fraud. I remember you going on the, mic, the macros, you were talking about that when I first met you, you were on the macros, and... You know, your, your meals were Was all... I doing the prep when I yeah, met you? Yeah, you was, John. Right. So you must have watched me change then. So I did, yeah. And you were uh, you were coming in with your little Tupperware tubs. Yeah. Bits of rice chicken, all that stuff going on. <sighs> yeah. I, I was in prison and it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday and the Echo. You get the Sunday Echo. And I'm opening it up because I get the echo. I got the echo every chubby. Day. Ba- what is it? Chubby actor. And then there's, there's a picture of John. What the fuck? I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Seeing this big <laughs> pie eating fucking fella on the right hand. No, that's what it was, John. And then I seen that was this the line. chubby actor yeah. does transformations like nice one. Fucking pure athlete on the next. So uh, yeah, you know that's a massive achievement, John. So you 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 focused, you're driven. Yeah. If you want something, you'll get it. Yeah. And that's what you you've done with him. Um, because from would you say from like before 2018 and, and the next four to five years, is it four years? Going up, going forward. Your life just totally changed from there. Mine on. recently. Yeah. Mine? From, yeah. Um do you become more popular in the sense of I, like... I, can I tell you can I tell you why I, I do set myself challenges? Go on. When I was I was about twenty one. My brother Terry comes up to me and goes, Do you want to do the London Marathon? And people didn't really do marathons back then, Bill. No. no you can say what you want, but it's not the way it was now. Um and I went I was not sporty in school. And he went, I went, yeah, go on. He went, we'll fill this form out. Because there was a ballet. And like one in 50 people or something stupid getting through the ballet. But I didn't know about the ballet. 
So he enters and I enter, and I got my my form through saying, "Oh, congratulations, you're in the thing, you know all that." And I went, "Did you get your did you did you get your thing?" And he went, "Oh no, I never got accepted." And I was like, "What do you mean you never got accepted?" So I got in the ballet, absolute luck, and I ran a marathon, Bill, and it took me five and a half hours. Did you train for it or did you? Yeah, of course, yeah, but I was overweight. So I, I was um I, I went I went I've never been sporty in my life. I was never sporty in school. Um. And I ran a marathon, and it took me five and a half hours. I remember looking behind me, thinking I was coming last, and I ran a marathon. People like me, from County Road, from my background, with the way my attitude and the way I was get, get brought up, I don't do shit like that. I'm not meant to. Makes other people feel uncomfortable. I don't... I ran a marathon, and I remember thinking, I was running a marathon. I can do anything. I can do anything. And that's what changed my attitude. And I can't do fucking anything within reason. But that's what changed my attitude. But I just wanted to get that in to sort of show I've got yeah. a pain in my side. Yeah, you spoke about that the other day. Bit of an hospital, that's another story. So where are we now? 2018. Just Yeah. Your life your life started because you before before we had COVID, you know, you were still in the shop and you're doing your acting classes and Yeah. Stuff like that, and then, you know, well, I, as an actor, um, I've always, I've been to every audition. Like, there's been times where I've had to travel to London five times on, on a bounce for auditions. That's happened loads of times. I used to go at least once a week. It's changed now because we do self tapes, but I, I put a lot of work and effort into this. But my attitude was just keep going. You'll get it. You'll get your break. I've had so many close, close calls. I've done like 32 commercials. Now, you don't get many actors who have done that many commercials. That's good going because a lot of people go for them. So to finish in the top one is good and I've done it a lot. To loads of TV and film, whatever else. But I've never had me break and um, it's like, I just keep going, you'll get it. But then I thought to myself, hang about, I could keep going and never get, I could run out of time. I might yeah. get to, I might get old and I haven't had it, I haven't had it. So what do we need to do? So my mate, a casting director, and a phone up one day. He said, "What do I need?" I said, "What do I need to do?" He said, "You need to create your own stuff." This Dan, yeah, Dan, yeah, Hubbard, yeah. I, love him. I like Dan. Yeah, oh, you speak to him on Twitter, don't you? Yeah, Dan, yeah, he's always, he's a big big fan of our show, by the way. Yeah, like, he's one of my best mates, Dan. Is he? Yeah. Which is weird because he's a fucking big casting director, but we just hit it off one day, and we just that's fifteen years ago. I speak to him nearly every day, um, and then. I thought, right, okay, so I wrote this short film about the Catholic Church, um, about, like, abortion and, um, it's like abortion, and just, 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 just the, the guilt of being a Catholic, you know what I mean, like, children getting born and going into limbo and original sin, it's quite, quite, like, intricate, so the, this guy goes into the church and he has a rant at God, and, um, it's called Just, find it on YouTube, um, so I made, I thought, I'm going to make that, Go to the BFI, get funding, do that, smash it, yeah? Then once I've smashed that, I'll write a big script for a film. Because I've just won the awards for that one, I'll um, I'll get funded for that one. And that's how I showcase myself. Simple. But I had I had a bit of a path now, instead of just going on a train all the time. Yeah. And uh, so we were in the process of doing that. And then, <laughs> then um, lockdown come. I was like, shit, oh, fuck's sake. So that just got put on a back burner. So I just started putting wigs on in the house and I was just messing around. And I didn't intend to be creating my own stuff with that, but that's what it become. Yeah. So that comedy has been an avenue. Oh, oh, I am an actor, first and foremost. And this comedy stuff is an extension of it to um, to help my path to being an actor. Because I'm probably far better a state actor yeah. than I am a comedian. Yeah, so that's that, and that's when obviously lockdown. You know, I done all my videos during lockdown, and I loved it, and everyone loved it, and I still get people coming up to me now. Thank like read the way scallies you can come across, and he approach you, and uh, you just expect them to maybe give you shit and that, which I don't get shit to be fair. And um, he'll go like seriously, like like I want to shake your hand, like you literally got me through lockdown, and I go, oh nice one, to go no seriously. I was in a bad place, like. My dad and me. I know, I get it all the time. And isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that really nice? Like? I don't know. Cause, uh, See, I feel emotional about that as well. It's, it's just nice. That you I know what? It, it, it's nice to know that you've been of a benefit to someone else's life. Because for me, you know, I've had that, you know, ex my experience is the same, you know, Bill. 
I go home and I listen to that and I think, you know what, I know I'm not on my own here. I can yeah, relate, yeah. I can identify. I try and tell my mates, they want some kid come up to me, say, look, I try and tell my mates about what's going on. And before I open my mouth, I judge myself and I think, I can't tell them because they're going to make a cunt out of me. Yeah. He said, but listening to you, it gives me the courage and I think, fucking hell. Wow. Yeah. Because you, I, I've lived it and experienced it and I just share, you know, my journey and it's because there's no other way than just being honest about what's been going on for you. And it's more attractive. Transparency. Yeah. It's all it's it, real, it, 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 This is why I think I struggle with Yeah, well, don't, don't feel like an imposter, John, because... No, you know, I'm not an imposter. I am, I am who I am. I wear my ass on my sleeve. People say it's a feminine trait, but it takes a real man who's not... A real man to not be scared and identify who he is. Do you know what I mean? So if, if a man's open and honest, in my opinion, that's a real man. But it's, you know, it, it, it's... Um, it's associated with a feminine trait. I always thought I was feminine. It's not. I'm a fucking real man because I'm honest. So where are we now on a timeline? We're still in there. We're just in lockdown. The people yeah. coming up to you. Yeah. So then... The um, phone wigs on. You know all about the, the Corona show. So what was... Where did that... Obviously, you're just sitting in the house. Was that through boredom, John? Was it just like trying to entertain people on Insta ultimately Facebook, yeah because that done often it wasn't for the validation it was the creativity that's where I was getting my buzz if I'm editing a video the buzz for me was editing it and then putting it online so I thought to myself am I doing this for attention am I doing this for validation so I this is what I'm like I'll ask myself the question and is it for validation is it to be liked no the reason why I, the reason why I done it, the editing process was enjoyable because it made me laugh, yeah. and I judged if it was funny by if it made me laugh, and I enjoyed that. Then I give put it put it out and give it to the people, and if something I've done makes people smile, that's okay to make me feel good. That's not validation. That's not, um, that's not me because you know obviously you know people get slated for like being attention seekers, but that's not why I do it. You know, I enjoy that, and I enjoy that, and that's absolutely, completely, 100% selfish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if people can, if I can spread joy, fucking fantastic, isn't that great? You know, you know when you're spreading joy, do you feel like you, you also suffer behind those characters in your own mental well-being? Suffer behind the characters? Yeah, you know, like... The characters are characters. They're, they're the people that you portray. Yeah. Okay, so... So you, John, what are you like as a person, you know... Once you take all that off, like take we've, we've all we all got masks, right? What we're talking about here, we've got masks. We take them off, but our own, we're sitting there. There's just us. I can't wear a mask. That's why when I worked in the barbers, I had to get away because I couldn't put that act. I had to be myself, and I struggle to find connection with people because I think being a barber for so long, you see people, Bill. You understand them, the archetypes. So you know when someone's full of shit, and it's very rare you come across someone who you can have connection with. There'll be people who come in the barbers and I'll go, oh, I don't want to cause his hair. Because I know I'm going to get the life sucked out of me. Mm. And then there'll be another fellow who'll come in and I'll go, Peter, wait for me. Wait. <laughs> because it's reciprocation. Yeah. And I'll get on with it. So I'm, I, I like people who are abrupt, yeah. honest and straight. And a lot of people don't like them. But at least I know where I am. Yeah. And that's it. So I, I, I struggle. It's all about connection. I think that's what ultimate happiness is, Bill, is connection with people. That's it. Um... But it's hard. It's hard because there's not many people who, who are truly transparent and honest. I can't be asked wearing a mask. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Look at me, I'm fucking crying on your podcast. Yeah. No, that's, you know what, that's real. Do you know what I mean? To be honest, John, I was like, you fucking all emotional, to be fair. You are? I was feeling it. You know, like, I, I, that, cause I, you know when like, I, I picture it and the empathy kicks in and the feelings that attach to it, and it's like, fucking hell. You know. And I'm my, all over the place here, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, you know what though? My 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 mistress, right, she's um I I've I've never ever cried in front of her. Right. Um I've never showed any vulnerability. And I think that's because of um that that feeling of I've gotta be a man sometimes, you know. But you know, like when I'm on my own, it is me. You wanna think about my brother Joe and I think about his future and I think about my mum and I think about you know what's going to happen because I go there with that job. You know, I project and I wonder, you know, who's going to take care of him? How's he going to be? And you know, but I don't, see, I don't talk about that because we're not, we're only in the moment. We're not in the future. <coughs> we're not, we're not there. And I think, well, how, how, how am I going to look after him? I've got, I've got a family. I've got kids. I've got this, if that. You know, he's, he's, he's in his own little world. So all that goes on for me, and I don't, I don't really share it with anyone. But I, I keep it to myself, and I, I know I should. And I think I'm going to. 
got a few videos going forward where I'm going to start like talking about me, uh, me fears. Yeah. You know, me hopes and me, me dreams, uh, me like going forward. But, but it, when I do go to them places, it gets it gets me really emotional. I feel really vulnerable. Well, we'll because I've told me timeline about me. I'm going to tell you another timeline in a bit, and I'm going to I'm going to entwine them because this has been the major problem for me. Um, but where am I now? 2000 and yeah. So I, I don't know. We just started doing the live shows and stuff like that and whatever else. And I really um, really enjoyed it. And then we we done Corona um, Civil War the 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 show um, the series I done and. Uh, I was just dead happy, dead happy. Didn't need a woman, nothing like that. And then I did meet a woman uh, when I weren't interested, but it never worked out. Um, it's a bit taboo this one, but I was very, uh, I, I was fucking heartbroken. I was fucking heartbroken. Absolutely, that's when I was on the podcast. Yeah, I, 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 I literally thought like I'd done all my work in my life, and God was rewarding me now, and it never worked out. We 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 were I believe we were mad, but there's, there was other things that yeah. didn't make it happen. But um, so yeah, and then I got with someone else, and I just fuck you know. Oh, and then I am putting a plaster on a disaster. That's what we. I put a plaster on a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big time. I'm, I was a fucking big fan of that. Like. But then, this is where I'm going thingy again. I had to ask myself the question. I think true happiness, Bill. You can't be truly happy on your own. You can't. Because it's about connection. It's about whether it's community. But if you're truly happy, if I'm walking down, I don't give a fuck what anyone says, right? I go on holiday to Mexico. But I went to holiday on, to Bali on my own. I was on my own. I come home early. I didn't like it. What, oh, so you think, oh, we'll be comfortable with yourself, John. So I've gone home, done that work on myself. So I can go to Bali and I'll have a nice time. But if I go to someone I'm in love with and I've got with who I'm in love with and I've got a, like an intimate relationship with, that's going to make that experience a lot better, isn't it? So that makes you happier. So I think happiness lies there. It's about having a, it's about connection and it's about having an intimate relationship with another human being. No, but, I, I totally agree because I went to Thailand on my own, John. And yeah. It was fucking painful. But if you wait, Michelle, or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, you know, someone you're in love with and sitting down at the beach having, having a cocktail is so much more nice than when you're with someone who you can reciprocate with. Yeah. So I've always looked for this. I've always looked for it and I've failed over and over and over again. And I know why. And this is the work that I'm putting. So if we go back, I was with the baby's mum and I was pretty content. But in my head, I needed more. I needed something different. I needed this. And I didn't. I didn't. And we were quite, quite, quite happy. But I, need, I needed another buzz. Um, and then I met... I got with this girl from Blackburn, and we, we it was only a little whirlwind, but that's the first time I'd really, like, like reciprocated. We were both on the same, and it was, like, it was lovely, but again. I think I met her, John. This was the one in the... Uh, blonde hair. No, that was, that was another one. No, <laughs> I, you know, this one, she was from Blackburn. We were only happy for about three months, but it was, it was just fucking wonderful. It was lovely. <laughs> the one. <laughs> anyway, it was just a lovely time, um, and then I got with her. And then that never worked out. So again, boom, build yourself back up, John. And then I got with this girl from Blackburn, it, um, from Warrington. I fucking loved her. <laughs> loved her. Loved her. That was it. I had my nice car. I had my gorgeous home in Frodsham. Money in the bank. Business flying. Body. The law. Met the girl. Sad. I went to Bali and she fucked me off. <laughs> like four days in. Was you with her over there? No, no, I went on my own. Yeah. But I was planned anyway. And I flew home. I flew home because I wanted to fix it. She just, she just didn't want to know. Um, but I was dead surprised. I, so I had everything, but that external happiness. Did it, she it, send you a message while you were on holiday saying, "Look, it's fucking finished." Well, did you just get a phone call? Because that's heavy, that. It, it was heavy, yeah. But she's got her reasons why, do you know what I mean? We're still fr we're friends now. We yeah. understand each other and, and know yeah, why she... We understand at the time, mate, while you're on a... That's I it. was devastated. I, was, I, I lost my mum and my dad. And that initial pain was so fucking painful. But it taught me a lesson. How dare I let an external source be responsible for my happiness, do you know what I mean? Mm. So then, what happened there? I got with someone else. And that was a rebound. And it was miserable, it was miserable, it was 
I got with these type of women. I'm just going to say it. Narcissistic women. And you go, oh, my everyone's narcissistic. But unfortunately, I'm soft as fucking shite. And I let these women in. Got with her. Terrible time. Terrible. It was all right at first. Terrible time. And then I was like so happy on my own. But I was so happy on my own. And then I met this other girl. Never worked out. And then I got with someone else. And that never worked out. So it's like, what what I realised was, I've I've been to therapy for years and I go to counsel and I'm a big advocate of that, you know. So, I, you know, if if you need guidance in life, go to a therapist. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you, but your mate down the pub is not equipped to give you advice. He's not, unless he's a counsellor or a therapist. Um, But, I'd, so this, this year, the relationship I had, it never worked out. And I was like, I can't hate these women. I've got to take responsibility. Why do I choose these women? Why? So I went into codependence. I looked at codependency and I didn't want to know. Didn't want to know because I didn't want to admit it. I was codependent. And I what I was doing, I was anxious, preoccupied. So I'd get with a girl and I'd give them everything. I'd give them all my attention. But I was fucking sucking the life out of me and I was allowing that to happen. Yeah. So we went deeper than that. The reason why I was doing it is that I was, it's like a drug. It's validation. I was seeking breadcrumbs of validation off these women who were emotionally unavailable. And they were the women I was picking because I needed, I could meet this gorgeous girl and she was a lovely, she could have it all going for her. And if she gave me, if she loved me and gave me the love and affection and all that, that's not what I want. I want to be rejected. <laughs> yeah. I want to be rejected. It's treated me. I want to be, you have, you're you not giving me what I want, and yeah. that's rejection to reinforce the belief of myself. Yeah. And this is the year I've had, I've worked through all of that. Um, but then it goes back to me, childhood. My mum is emotionally unavailable. That's all I know. Love needs to be earned. Love needs to be earned, and I was always scorned. So that's where I belong, and that's the position I put myself in. So that's what I've always done. But now I'm not doing it. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of contributing factors that lead up to who you are and who you become and yeah. the way you behave and the way you, you react and you know in these relationships especially because I've had all that validation settling for crumbs. We've spoke about it yeah, on all similar. Have, John, you know, it's like um, we seek the crumbs. We yeah. seek it's breadcrumbs of validation to help and getting left on bricks. You know, and volunteering for a bit of pain. Oh, I'll have some more pain. And then you'll you have know. a girl who'll give you it all. You don't want to know. Exactly. It's like the bad lads, but these are the bad girls, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? That's why you let girls choose bad lads. And my missus goes, oh, I've got all, I've got all, like, you know, she knows what I'm saying. But. And we're men, and we're admitting this. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah, and I, I feel, it's, I feel sad, you know, for, you know, the people who are around me today because of all that I've been through, all the consequences of, you know, them bad experiences with girls and relationships that have been failed, have been toxic, and, um, I've, sh I've I've put myself through all that crap, and then I meet someone who really loves me, really cares for me, wants to be with me, and and I, and I, and I freeze up sometimes. Oh, fuck it, what's going on? And it's only because it taps into all that stuff from the past, right? But I'm still trying to bring it to the now and go, okay, right? Accept, you know, where you are, what's going on, and accept that people care for you, right? Yeah, and just allow so you it have to give yourself permission. Yeah, and just just allow it, but like, give yourself permission to be loved. And I, I still struggle. So with you it, wouldn't job. have been able to have got with Michelle five years ago, would you? No, no. So you that well, well done you. You put yeah. that work in in yeah. order to accept. But it's still, be... it's still. She knows, and I know it's still a work in progress. Yeah, it's always gonna be. It's not. I'm not like f full there's of. There's no fairy tale, Bill. No, there's not. There's no fairy tale. Every new situation creates a new set of problems, and yeah. that's that. Yeah, I beat but, myself up a little bit for that. Well, give yourself a slap. Give yourself a no, but give yourself a bit of credit because <laughs> you're allowing yourself now. Look, what we're talking about now is going to be so alien to some people. Yeah. And you go get a grip, da, da, da. You haven't been through what we've been through, or and luckily enough, I'm not calling myself a victim or nothing. But everyone's got their own problems and their own. Well, their John, own it, it is. With, haven't he? See, this is is a good topic because for for the likes of myself, you know, when I'm in a, in, a, in a bad place and I'm, and I'm in a toxic relationship, I get paranoid. You know, I'm checking my phone. You know, if, yeah. there's, if there's not a kiss there, if there's only two, or there's not three, or there was one mil you know, like, I start questioning everything, and I'll tell you something else, right, I could be in a meeting, right, of recovery, trying to get my shit together, you know, where I need to be, and the power of a sex message <coughs> can take me out the door. Well, that's anxious, preoccupied, Bill. I'm off, I'm out, right? Yeah. 
Surely I don't want to listen to the message. I don't want to get that recovery. I've got to answer this phone and I'm missing what I need to, to, to take in. Yeah. So, because of that, the power, people don't understand the power of a text, you know, the power of a phone call, what it could do to you. It, it's, it's from it though, got you. It got you sent back from Bali home early. Yeah, true. That's the power of it, mate, the power of well, it. Well, it's a bit more deeper. It's, 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 it's the, the, the relationship with that girl, wasn't it? It was relationship with me fucking self. Yeah. I should never have done that. Yeah. I had a, I was in a body on me. Fucking yeah. I, it was just after the show. I was all carved <laughs> up. I looked great. I should have been in Bali having a ball, but no, I went home. Yeah. I went home. Shit, because I needed that. Yeah. No, no, John, stay in Bali. Have a fucking ball, lad. Yeah. Divvy. Yeah. yeah, but people might say it's romantic. It weren't. It was fucking stupid. Well, anyway, you know what, John? You're looking good today. Yeah. What? Let's talk. Let's give Jody a shout. Glamour models. Oh, you see, hey John, you're looking good today. Yeah. Let's talk about glamour dolls. Glamour dolls. <laughs> and he can't even plug it. Right? <laughs> glamour <laughs> dolls. <laughs> Jody knows the show. Yeah, yeah. So I said I'll give her a little mention. She's, Me and Billy yeah, go to the same boat. She, she's sad. Yeah, she's funny, isn't she? She is, mate. I get on well with her. Appreciate all. Profiler. And thanks. Why not? Thanks for putting me in touch with her. Sorry, Bill. You know, she's um, she's done me. She's given me the vitamin B and the vitamin C. Get on jabs. this. And he knows what I'm <laughs> going to fucking talk about. <laughs> Jody messages me and goes, John, um, Billy's coming in tomorrow. Yeah, he's going to get his lips done. I'm like, he's getting his lips done? And she's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about that, Jody. He, went, he wants them to. And I went, Jody, talk him out of it. Just wave it, don't. And, and like, you're like, he's messing with me at the same time. All right, John. Um, yeah, I'm going to see Jody tomorrow. I'm going to get my lips done. I'm like, oh, am I missing a sick here, Bill? <laughs> I <don't, it's, laughs> <laughs> a load of fellas getting the lips done. Yeah, the pair of them are winding me up. They're like, shit. <laughs> yeah, she was funny. <laughs> but at least they never call up and fucking rip the back, are you? Was he fucking playing that? I was thinking, oh, like, next week you'll see John with a pair of big, crazy lips. No, I was anyway. like, talk him out of it, Jody. Yeah, but you're doing, you're doing a lot of good things now. Just, oh, let's talk about what you're doing for charity this year coming. Yeah. So this this all goes back, like this year has been a tough year, and that's fine, because I've had wonderful years, you know, not all of them are going to be fucking great, are they? Well, I'm saying, I've had great things happen as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I've given everything up. I've given everything up. Um, I'm staying in my caravan at the moment. Um, there's a reason why. Is because I've given up my home, I've given up all my possessions, I've given sold my shop, I've given up everything because I want to reset. So I thought I'm going to walk from Land's End to John O'Groats because I think it's just like I don't know connecting with nature, man. I think just me on the open road. What an experience is that going to be? And it's like I'm 41. Most people. They're in a marriage or a, a, in a home or tied to a job and did it in. I reckon there's probably lots of people who'd like to do what I'm doing. And I'm fortunate enough that I've freed everything up. So I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I've always wanted to do it. It was Eddie Azard, actually. I seen Eddie Azard do it, running it. And I think, was it Eddie Azard? Yeah, I think it was Eddie. And I thought, I'm going to do that one day. And look, you'd be surprised how many people don't know what it is. Mm. Um, and I can't wait. I'm wild camping along the way as well. It's just that'll be incredible, lad. It's it, it 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 years ago, Bill. You used to have it. You know, you had a Windows computer, yeah. Microsoft computer. Sometimes it never ran efficiently. So what you'd have to do was a defragmentation. It's called a defrag, and what that does, you just leave and it organizes all the files and puts all the files in order. And yeah. and that's what I want to do. It it's a it's a reset. And when I come out of that, I'm going to be a comp. I think I am. I think I'm going to be a. I'm going to lose some weight as well. Well, hopefully, maybe not. You'd be no, surprised. I'm pretty sure you're going to. Man, I'll lose some. I will be. Yeah. You, you, you might be surprised, you know. I When I used to run marathons, I was a fat marathon runner. Um, I've been burning some calories on that, Toby. We'll see. Yeah. I, I, yeah I, I, I think I'll, I'll be all right, but I don't think I'm going to be like. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think when I come, come out of this walk, I'll. Um, I'll just be. A, it's like a rite of passage. It's a reset, it's a celebration. It's a. Uh, I've, I've been st- I've been in a job for I've had a business for seventeen years, because so when you've got your own business, you are constantly in a state of fight and flee. 
you're in constant states of hypertension because anything could go wrong at any one given time. Do you know what I mean? So that and that's why I've, that's why I've, I've moved on and got rid of it because anything could happen. Thing hasn't turned in. The shutters won't open. Did it? Did it? Haven't had enough this week for the wages. Oh, it's gone. So this is a celebration now. I can chill, and I'm just gonna. This oh, is what I'm gonna do. And it's for the weapons down. Well, that's up. it. I thought I ultimately, as I said before, it's like this is. I want them doing it for me. Really, ultimately, it's like. So, but I also thought, right, we'll do it for the charity and weapons down gloves up, because I, I, I had this idea years ago. Like, I thought the way to do it is like... Because growing up, seeing lads who went to boxing gyms and lads who never went to boxing gyms, there was a difference. You could see. Like, they're, they're getting taught discipline. They're getting taught structure. They, they, it's healthy. Da, da, da. They're getting taught by men and they're getting validation in, in the gym. And then you've got lads on the street who are getting validation on the street, but they're not getting what they're getting. So I always thought this is a great way. Mm. And then obviously what you, you know, seen you, you were there. Gangs the is just like mixed up. It's just like a family thing. Yeah, it's a family yeah. thing. It's a loyalty. Yeah, well, and, and it's, it's it's sort of a misguided loyalty, isn't it? So Yeah, but I don't I believe that's not. So I always thought this was a thing. And when I seen what you were doing with weapons down, gloves up, and then obviously I watched it grow. And I thought, this is who I'd like to raise money for, because yeah, I no, really believe in it. It's, it's brilliant. You know, we've got a young girl called Faye Lavacy. She's going to do Kilimanjaro. Yeah. yeah. shout out to Faye. So if you want to sponsor Faye as well, she'll be doing that in the new year sometime. John's going to be doing, yeah, weapons down, gloves up. You know, the walk for for these kids who need some some support and some mentoring and guidance. Yeah. You know, and, and put it on the right pathway, because you've just described that you know, flawlessly, John. People who go to the gym, and people who don't go to the gym as kids, yeah. you know, they're getting validated by, you know, girls and this, that and the other, you know, trying to impress upon their friends. It becomes county lines. It becomes like everyone's skin. So to get the clothes that you want, you've got to do a little bit of a graft. Temptation, bang. You know, with the temptation, no, it's, it's, all, it's, it's, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, terminally I mean, hip and fatally cool. It's cool to be involved in them. So, John, <laughs> where are we now? We've done really well here. How long are we on? We're on here. We're on nearly an hour. Are we? We are. Wow. That's flying. This is good. I think we started it. Yeah. So we've got five, ten minutes. But for people who don't know what Land's End to John O'Groat is, because you'd be surprised, you know, it's the lowest part of Cornwall to the highest point in Scotland. And where are you starting? January the 5th. But where? Land's End. Cornwall. Is it, is, it, is it Land's End always the beginning or is John O'Groat? I don't know. John O'Groat's at the top. So... It's but what if, what if, what if John and Gross is the bottom and Land's End's at the top? Depends which way you've got the globe, Bill. But it's at the top. And Scotland's <laughs> at the top. <laughs> yeah, so it's 1,200 miles. Um, the support from Weapons Down Gloves Up has been amazing. It's it's like we've got a real great team. Like It was originally just me. It was like, yeah, I'll just go on my tent. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. I was just going to go on my tent. But um, Weapons Down Gloves Up being bossed and right behind me. And, and, and we meet up and I can't wait to get going. I can't what, what date I is can't it you're going? The 5th, of the, the 5th of January. The 5th of January, yeah. the day after my birthday. Is it? Yeah. Oh. I'm, 50 come to Cornwall, on, I'm 50 on 50 on the 4th. Ah, yeah. I can't fucking believe that. I've just said ah, that. I'm celebrating. Wow. Celebrating 5th uh, Billy's half century. And my sister's born on the same day as me. Really? Yeah. Eight years apart. Oh, eh? Mad one. How bizarre. And our kid, his bud, little boy, Macaulay's on the same day. Really? Yeah, everyone's on the same day. Then we got two sets of twins born on the same. Your mum and dad day. just must like just like <sighs> got it on one one day, yeah. They did, lad. And that was it. Just na- every nine. My mum had my mum. My mum had six kids in eight years. Can you imagine? What that? happened nine months before you were born in your family? Like what? Every nine months. Is this someone's birthday? Is it, no it birthday? Birthday? Is it Chris? When's your birthday? And Joey's January. birthday's in. So you're like, oh no, when were you? So our kids' birthdays December, our Kevin's, then as our Joey's in February. No one's in like July. Or, they're all in like around Christmas time. You know what I mean? Your mum and dad must have sex once a year on the yeah, same. My, my sister's. My, That's my, what my, my, my brother, and my sister, of February. Our Joey's December. I'm sure it's December. I fucking can't remember now. Um, and then our kids' December. I'm January. Yeah. Wow. They're all in that in the winter when it was fucking freezing. Yeah. So John. Nice one. I have absolutely loved this um, this topic that we didn't even have a topic. We've just fucking come up with something that's been oh, brilliant. Yeah. It's do, flu, aren't it? Yeah, I do enjoy having these little chats. Mm-hmm. And me and Billy always have these little chats, you know. Even when you know we're not. This is this you'll is phone up. You'll go. All right, John. It's Billy. <laughs> but I'll do it to him as well. <laughs> I go. I know I can speak to you like this, Billy. So yeah, we dump on each other, but that's fine. 
because we reciprocate it. And you know what? I think it's in, and going on that as well. I think it's important that people out there who are struggling, right? You know, just pick up that phone. There's someone out there that's going to believe in you. You know, there's so much of it. Right there now, is. Bill. There is. And it's, there's a lad I went to South Africa with, Peter Jagard, and uh, it, it, it was sound. He, he, you know, he's he's a dad. He's got two kids. He's um, he's just a boss fella. Like he plays Zelda, and I play Zelda, so we had that little connection and. I went on a, I went on Facebook the other day and I seen with someone I was that ran he lives in London and I had a friend in common I'm like why have I got a friend in common with Peter Jagger and I went on and I went on his fella's thing you will be you will be deeply missed and I'm like what and mm-hmm. I've sent the ladder but and I burst out crying it really got me and then there's other people but when people when people do end their lives like when you see it on social media they go come as a shock obviously they never say the ends of the life and um it, it's valuable members of the community bill mm. it's people who contribute to the community that, that are gone and it's so it's fucking heartbreaking man it the, the, it, it's i'm going on a walk i'm going on a walk um it's not it doesn't have to be the, it, I know you people can't cope and I know it gets that painful. It's like, it's just easier to just go, just end it. Just, you don't have to deal with it anymore. Just reset. Just reset. And it's a bit of a bold statement what I'm going to say, but I'm still here because I talk about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's what it is. It's a, if you're going to talk about the problems, you're in the solution. Mm. I've always said that, you know, Problem shared is a problem half, so, so to speak, isn't it? Yeah. But there's another fucking thing where it does my head in. What's that? So you want to normalise conversation with, for men. So because if they normalise it, they feel not... If you, if someone's feeling down and they speak about it, speak, it's normalising conversation for men, right? And in turn, that makes them feel better and that might be enough to prevent them ending their lives, right? So if I'm transparent on social media, I'm transparent and I'm honest yeah. and all that. You know, this feminine traits that men are allowed to do. But it doesn't society now encourage us to be transparent and honest? Male masculinity. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. So encourage you. So if I act on that and I do it, people then message me going, if you need to talk to me, you know. And that puts me off being transparent because because I'm being honest, people presume there's something up and that pisses me off. The reason you're putting try- it out there, the reason you're writing that out no, is you're already speaking the, to someone. They're, they're trying to help. It yeah. comes from a good place. It does, yeah. But then you go, if you need to talk, you know. Like that is like... And then he make you feel like there's something wrong with you. But the whole... It, it fucking defeats the object. Do you know what I mean? It does, yeah. If people express themselves, they're expressing themselves. And I know... Do you know what I mean? It's not normalised. And if I go to therapy, there's something wrong with me. There's not. If you go to the gym, fucking you're one of the lads, aren't you? But if you go to the gym for your mind, there's something wrong with you. No. Go to fucking sort your head out as much as your body. And that's that. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> thank you for joining us at the All or Nothing podcast with me, John May, and my special guest, Billy Moore. Quick one before we finish then, John. Wisdom, pale of wisdom. What would you say to a young John May coming through the doors of life? If they had the opportunity, you know. What would I say to the young John May? Um, wait till you're 40, John. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, what would I say? Pales of wisdom. Do what you'd enjoy doing with the people you'd enjoy being with. Bottom line, everything else is bullshit. Brilliant. I'm with that. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it.